So, all he has for this is Fireball, so I'm gonna Goblin Barrel in front. Maybe they can miss the Fireball. We'll see if they do. <laughs> Dude, no way! Oh my gosh. What's up, everybody? It's Turkey here, and today we're gonna be playing one of the best spam decks in the game right now. Not just for this season, but for next season as well. The Evo Knight and the Evo Wall Breakers are gonna make this deck absolutely insane. This deck is so fun to play and it's so easy to overwhelm your opponents because you just have so much spam. There are several players inside of the top 100 that are running this exact deck right now. So I'm gonna hop into some games, show you how to use this deck, but before I do that, if you are watching the video right now, if you could go ahead and smash that like button and please consider subscribing to my channel. It is free for you, but it helps me immensely. So I appreciate that and let's get into some games. All right, into our match here. Starting plays with this deck, any of your spam units are like a pretty good uh, option for you. I think Goblin Gang or Goblin Barrel are some of the best starting plays, or Split Wall Breakers is one of the best starting plays in the game. So my opponent eats a lot of that damage. I'm going to hit him with more spam. I'm going to drop my Princess at the bridge. Maybe that was a prediction. I'm not entirely sure. I'm going to go like this and then try and get my King Tower activated. Oh, I just, I just missed it, but that's okay. The idea was there, so from the components of my opponent's deck, it looks like it's going to be Balloon Freeze, most likely, which means they might have a Bar Barrel, so I'm going to go ahead and place the Barrel off to the side like that. I don't know, Night Witch, it actually, now that I think about it, okay, I was going to say it's a Golem deck, but I think he's just running like a HodgePodge deck, and that's my final, that's my final thought, is that this dude's deck is just all over the place. So yeah, this deck's really, really crazy. You have a lot of spam, um, and so what this deck really, really relies on is baiting out your opponent's, like, log or their small spell or whatever, and then you having subsequent spam units that they don't have the proper cycle for. So if you're playing against someone who's running a really heavy deck, like this guy, you can force out tons of elixir and then punish in the opposite lane. Like, this dude has a Tesla. He has a 4 elixir baby dragon, a 5 elixir e-dragon, a 4 elixir inferno dragon. So if you can force those out... Um, then you can punish in the opposite lane. So I don't know, like, I truthfully don't know what this dude is thinking right now. He's kind of all over the place. So we're going to get a ton of damage. We're going to do some great, a great split lane pressure here. We're going to have the barrel down, which is going to be tanking for the dark goblin. I'm going to log those evil skeletons to get them out. I'm going to protect my princess while breakers on the opposite side. And I wouldn't be surprised if we take almost both of the towers here. Yeah, there's one. And, uh, we're going to get the other one pretty soon. So yeah, this guy's uh, kind of playing like a bot right now. I'm going to Knight and Dark Goblin in the pocket. One of the best moves that you can do with this deck. The Evo Knight tanks all of the damage from both of the, the towers. And it looks like my opponent gave up. Looks like his deck was a little too heavy and definitely not a meta deck. So we'll take the dub. We'll see you in the next one. Into our next match here. And we do not have Wall Breakers in our starting hand. You could go with the Dark Goblin at the bridge. That's like good pressure. Let me know. I want to know. I'm curious what you guys think about next season, if you're excited for next season or not. I've heard mixed things from people, uh, whether they're excited for the double evolution season or not. I personally am. I feel bad for underleveled players because, for those of you that don't know, only level 15 players get the double evolution. So let me know what you think about that. Uh, so they use their log. So I think what I'm going to do is go for a goblin gang. And then I'm considering going for a barrel in the opposite lane. Mm, looks like he's running Little Prince Royal Hog Cycle with Evo Skeleton. So it's a really good deck. They most likely have an Earthquake in here, a Delivery, and a Log is usually the variant that I see. So he'll have a lot of answers for us. We don't have a building, but we're going to rely on some pretty nasty counter pushes to get our damage. So Poison instead of Earthquake. Okay, good to know, good to know. I actually think that's a little worse for us. I was going to say, I don't know how much value the Earthquake gets, but that's fine. I think we're going to pressure with Wall Breakers. Maybe force out a Cannon. Or a Log. That's fine with me as well. Won't have Log for the Barrel. Nice. So if you look at what his, what his hand is going to be now, he doesn't have a Log and he doesn't have a Delivery. So he's probably going to Cannon on this. Okay, so he takes the Poison. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to pressure like this. No Log, no Delivery. Best option is a Little Prince or a Cannon or something like that. And those are not very good options, right? So that's what this deck is about. Outcycling their counters and taking advantage of everything. Beautiful plays. He called a good game. Yeah, probably. 
At this point, uh, I don't foresee them breaking through or doing enough damage to our tower. And um, I think they literally gave up. No, they just have really slow reactions. Okay. <laughs> Pressure opposite lane should force out the cannon. I'm going to go like this. Even with that poison down, this is mostly going to counter the piggy, so that's fine with me. He eats those wall breakers as well. One thing you do need to be careful about with this deck is you do not have a big spell. So the game is not over until it's over. Like, genuinely, it is not over until it's over. But most of the time, you can force out really, really um, negative elixir trades from your opponents, and you can get damaged that way. I'm going to go like this. I don't think my opponent's smart enough to block the Princess of the Bridge. Uh, that is correct. Nice, forces out the log. And his only chance now is to go in with Royal Hogs at the bridge, so we're going to be ready with our Rascals. I'm going to play them preemptively. Dark Goblin low to avoid giving poison value. And a well-timed log is going to clean up this game. So that's a good game. I'll go ahead and see you guys in the next one. Into our next match here. Uh, something this deck I think really thrives off of is split lane pressure as well. So in general, when you're playing this deck, you want to make sure that you don't pigeonhole yourself into going into a single lane if you can avoid that. That's like a little a little tip for you. I'm gonna go like this, big rascal boy. I thought I thought I timed that properly, but I didn't. That's all good. I'm gonna log to finish off this um, spear goblin hut, and then pressure with wall breakers should force out a spell. But I don't think that zap is gonna save one of the wall breakers. I was trying to have the big rascal boy tank for the spear goblin, and then my dark goblin was gonna DPS down the spear goblin hut, but uh, I mistimed it. All right, so he's running a, a bait deck as well. But with Spear Goblin HUD and Dark Goblin, not entirely sure. I don't see a, a ton of this deck. Pretty aggressive uh, Magic Archer, to be completely honest. T takes the arrows. But now, what does he have for this? Let's see. Mini Pekka probably right when he hit four Elixir, so he's going to have to eat that entire barrel. And we're going to do a really, really nice Wall Breaker Kite. So we're going to defend with our offense it's a really really good play so we're gonna try and wait till the mini pekka gets to that tile and then you're gonna pull it back it's kind of scary because you're playing those really really late um but it works and you can see those wall breakers they defended the mini pekka and they took out the spear goblin hut so that's like a two for nine trade which is absolutely crazy that's one of the best plays that you can do with this deck we're ready for the uh dark goblin this time maybe we can force out arrows is okay, zap so his hand right now is like Valkyrie, Arrows. So I'm going to Spear Goblin at the bridge. I want to force out Arrows, but I'll probably just Valkyrie late. I just eats it. Interesting. I'll never complain about that. Goblin Barrel should force out the Arrows. I've been waiting for this dude to play his Arrows. There they are. Let's go like this. Maybe we can force out uh, Valkyrie. That would be awesome. That's even better, actually, because I think one of those connects. Beautiful, beautiful. I'm going to knight like so. And then we're going to... I think Princess cleans that up. She almost does. It's all good, though. We're going to Dark Goblin to clean it up. There we go. Dark Goblin going in, as always. Goblin Gang on this side. Okay, because he went for his arrows, I'm going to quickly Princess at the bridge. Yeah, and Zap is not going to be a good response to that. We're going to do our favorite play one more time when the Wallbreaker... Or when the mini P.E.K.K.A. gets to the right tower. Evil Knight like this to block the Magic Archer shot. <clears throat> that was the idea, anyways. Dark Goblin going in. Since he doesn't have the Valkyrie, I'm going to pressure with this. Because it'll probably force out a spell. Okay, nice. He has the Mega Knight, no big deal. Good for us to know, honestly. Once that locks on, I'm going to go like this. Knight's going to protect. And we're chilling. So usually when you do see a spawner deck, it's pretty common that they'll have a Mega Knight in it. And um, I should have known that, but that's all good. He doesn't have any Elixir to defend the Princess, so that's a good game. We'll see y'all in the next one. All right. Into our next game here. And I could start with Goblin Gang. I could start with Goblin Barrel. If you do start with Goblin Barrel, just make sure you put it in the safe spot, at least the first time, just in case they are running a Tornado. So you can see there, he's running a Tornado. And I literally spoke that into existence, but they can't activate King Tower from that spot. Or I think they can with, like, a perfect NATO, but no one can ever do it. It's fine. So there's a, a perfect tip for you. I man Like I said, I manifested that. And I'll have to respond to that Dark Goblin. 
Uh, okay, pretty slow reactions by my, my boy. Okay, we're going to rascals like this, and we're going to get a late log here. And I don't want to spend any more than a princess on that. And, yeah. Unfortunate that they do have the Mother Witch in this deck. Whenever you see a Mother Witch, you need to play around that card. That card gets so much value against your deck specifically, and that's not a problem. You just need to keep that in mind when you're going for your spam units. So that princess is actually going to live. My opponent's messed up the bat, so it's perfect time to go in for a barrel. Okay. Guess the King Tower activated now, but that's fine for us. More Baker's opposite lane. And then all we, we can go for a Goblin Gang on the Sparky. We know they don't have the Mother Witch in cycle. He actually eats both of those Wall Breakers. And if he, if he does cycle back to a Mother Witch... I think he's one card off. Yeah, uh, it would only be on like one goblin. This time we're going to go for a knight. Make sure we don't give any mother witch value. I think he has a clone in here. We'll see if they go for it. Usually when you see giant skeleton barrel, they also run a clone. There it is. And he, uh, the clone timing kind of messed up the log there. So that was well played to my opponent. But they did spend a lot of that push. Oh, and unfortunately, the giant skeleton bomb connects to the tower. That's so cheesy, so unfortunate for us. But the good thing about their deck is they also usually aren't don't run a big spell. Usually. Um, so if we defend properly, we should be fine. Okay. I'm going to cycle my knight in the back, try and get to my Evo. Evo. Nice. Like I said, we want to avoid giving them value. Um... Okay, Dark Goblin low here. He's probably going to go for the barrel play again. So I'm going to make sure that I take their tower. Once the Mother Witch locks on, now I'm going to go for the Goblin Gang. Take care of the Mother Witch and the Sparky. Okay, it's going to be close. Come on, tower. Come on, tower. Come on, tower. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay. I don't think we're going to be able to save that tower. I'm just going to let it go and try and get to the next one. Okay. Okay. Wallbreaker is going to tank. Beautiful, beautiful. He has to go for the NATO. That's fine with me. Knight like this, so everything targets it. And like I mentioned, we're going to wait for a clone here. He missed the barrel. But it looks like that clone pushed the giant skeleton onto the tower. So that's really, really unfortunate for us. I'm going to go for Rascals in the pocket. And I don't think he'll have a proper response for this. Yeah, he plays the guards, but those Wallbreakers are going to connect. So not the cleanest game, but we got a dub. So that's a good game. We'll see you in the next one. All right, into our next match here. And we finally have the best starting play in the game. Split Wall Breakers pretty much always forces out a negative elixir trade or um, you get damage. Like, those are kind of the two options there. So whenever I see Ice Spirit Goblins, I think, like, Minor Poison Control, possibly. Um, but you, we can't know for sure. And that Dark Goblin went to work on his little prince. Absolutely crazy. I'm going to go for our Goblin Gang here. And I'm going to kite these back with like a, a Knight. And then I'm going to go for Wall Breakers as well because he went for that poison so aggressively. And the Logs are not going to stop this Ice Spirit Whale. Well played. But because he used his Log, I'm going to get aggressive and go for a Princess Goblin Barrel. When he has enough for Goblins, maybe. We'll see. Mm, yeah, okay. I was thinking of logging that um, if he played it sooner. But I'm just going to let it go. And Dark Goblin's going to clean everything up. And have a little counter push. So if you look at the damage that was exchanged there when he went for that minor minion poison, we were able to get an, a really big counter push. And that's what this deck thrives on. Is you can punish your opponent so well when they play their spells on your, your spam units. Okay, so he goes for the minor poison. I think that's pretty aggressive. Um, it was on the opposite tower too, so I don't know what he's thinking. That's a negative four trade. Um, then he has to spend like that. And guess what he doesn't have? Oh, my princess got hit by the log. Even so, we're going to get a ton of damage, so I'm fine. A little flub from us, <laughs> but we're totally going to be fine. And Dark Goblin's going to help out with the goblins, and then it's going to help out with the minions. Might force out a poison from him, which I would be completely fine with. Anytime they're using a poison and it's not supporting the miner, like, that's good for you. They can't go for those crazy miner poison pushes. Okay, he's most likely going to pop the ability... They do, so I'm gonna I'm gonna knight like this, and then get ready with wall breakers if he goes in for a miner. Beautiful, he's gonna have to log. And we made the same mistake with the princess again. Oh yeah, all good. 
We still we have so much spam and like he's not managing his cycle well at all. So we're gonna probably take most of that other side tower. And what's our what's the move here? Dark Goblin in the middle. You guessed it. Rascals down low, and pressuring while defending. You know it. You know it. You know it. He's probably gonna have to log, and then he's not gonna have a log for that side. We have a Dark Goblin going on the right and a Barrel going on the left. Okay. Those Rascal girls are gonna clock in. I'm gonna go like this. We're gonna have spam on both sides. He's not gonna be able to defend the Dark Goblin. He logs, but then what do you have for all of this, sir? Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. He plays the Mortar. He has nothing for the right side. One Princess Shot or a Goblin Stab closes out the game. So, so much spam. It's so hard for them to just defend if you do it well. So, good game. We'll see you in the next one. All right, into our next match here. I could start with the Princess. I think that's, like, pretty aggressive. Uh, unless you 100% know your opponent's deck. But if you play your Princess like this, it'll splash the Tower and it'll splash the Princess. So, yeah, you can see it forced out a Goblin Gang from them. So now that I, d I don't have my Login Cycle, he's most likely going to go for a Knight um, Goblin Barrel. And you can see a Goblin Gang... Goblin Gang played preemptively fully counters that. So I got a Princess Shot on the tower, and then I used my Log to get Log Chip, and then I countered his push no problem. So it looks like he's running traditional Log Bait, um, which is no surprise. I think that we have an edge in this matchup if we overwhelm them, but we do need to watch out for Rocket Cycle. So we need to, to use our spam to get an early lead, because if we don't get an early lead, they're gonna be able to um, chip us out with Rocket Cycle, and that's what you wanna avoid. Interesting, he's running with the Little Prince. Princess here is going to get a ton of value on both lanes. She's going to help out with the Little Prince as well. So they pop the ability, so I'm going to Rascals down low. And I'm going to pressure at the same time, so that way if he opts to spell um, any of my units, he won't have the log. So now, if you watch this, he just used his log. He's going to play Goblin Gang on the right, or he's going to... Oh wait, he doesn't have Goblin Gang in cycle. He's going to eat tons of damage, never mind. My boy's in trouble. That was a case in point of catching your opponent in an awkward cycle. Beautiful, beautiful. I'm going to let that knight get one shot. I'm fine with that. Yeah, one shot is fine. We're almost to our Evo knight, which is perfect. I'm going to knight to block the princess shot. And once the princess locks on, I'm going to go for my princess of my own. I think that's a really good play. We're going to wall breakers opposite lane. Now he needs to decide how does he want to defend all of this. He uses his log. Which you never want to... If I'm playing log bait, I never want to use my log in the manner that that individual just did. So I'm going to go like this, Dark Goblin, and then my Evil Knight on his Evil Knight. You always want to play your Evil Knight second, if you can. Princess to clean up their Goblin Gang. Okay. His little prince is getting a lot of value, but that's okay. We're going to have a nice counter push. I'm going to set up with Rascals in the back because we already have pressure on both lanes. Okay. I'm going to log here. When in doubt, just log, <laughs> honestly. And like I mentioned, we have a lead, but we need to maintain a healthy lead because we can't allow them to get to the point where they can catch up via Rocket Cycle, if that makes sense. Okay, Dark Goblin in the back for that. Rascal, Rascal Girl doing a ton of damage. Beautiful. Oh my gosh. I'm going to log this and then pressure with the barrel immediately because if they do go for their barrel, we can go for a Goblin Gang on it. We're pressuring so well right now. Okay. I'm going to Rascals like this. Should counter the barrel entirely. Beautiful, it does. And now we've just hit end game, right? We need to somehow get damage on their tower without a big spell. If this was normal bait, you could go for a rocket cycle. Perfect. They just cycled their log. We're going to get some barrel damage on the tower, albeit maybe not much. That Dark Goblin's going to get one shot if he doesn't play anything on it. And that's almost going to put it into log range. He's going to get desperate and he's going to go for something cheeky. We're going to Goblin Gang to protect. Dark Goblin in the opposite lane for the Little Prince. Pressure, pressure, pressure. Two Princesses. That warrants a log from me. But he just used his log and can't defend. So that's a good game. We'll catch you in the next one. Into our match here. So I will, I will say that while I love this deck, and it is very good, it does struggle against certain deck types like hog rider and beatdown decks like you do struggle a little bit i'll admit and that's okay in those decks you just have to play really aggressive and you need to pressure them when they're going in for a big push excuse me you want to force out as much elixir as possible in those moments 
So interesting, this guy is running arrows, hogs. It might be Royal Recruit spam, like with Zappies um, and Evo Royal Recruits. That'll be interesting, kind of like a spam versus spam matchup. Let's find out what his third spell is. He has arrows. Yep, it's fireball. Okay, so I made a video on this deck not too long ago, and it has triple spell. It has fireball, arrows, and bar barrel. So that's super annoying for us, um, but we actually have enough spam to get by. So when you run normal log bait, you get absolutely destroyed by this deck, but this variant of log bait is a little better for you. Okay, goes for the recruits. So I'm gonna rascals up high. It'll probably force out a spell, so I'm going to Princess down low, expecting them to spell one of the Rascals. Interestingly, they don't. They had arrows in hand. They could have gone for that, but they opt not to. I'm going to Wall Breakers far enough ahead of my Rascal where maybe he can't arrows everything. Okay, he opts to arrow that side, and uh, because he arrows that side, he can't get his Bar Barrel down in time. So all he has for this is Fireball, so I'm going to Goblin Barrel in front. Maybe they can miss the Fireball. We'll see if they do. <laughs> dude no way oh my gosh uh works every time works every time okay pigs into the goblin gang beautiful okay okay and my dude is struggling i do think double elixir does get a little better for them but for in the current state of the game it's not looking too hot for my boy. Okay. Evo recruits will be scary. Yeah. I'm going to go like this. Flying machine is going to be the first thing targeted by the tower, which is awesome. Knight up high. Kind of using those big bodies to protect our spam units in the back. That's the idea. He's going to have to play a small spell on that side. He's not going to have a small spell for the wall breakers. Maybe a fireball. Mm, goes for the goblin cage. That's well played. Some uh, missed... Missed um, cycle tracking by me. I didn't think he had that in hand. But at this point, we'd have to do a lot to throw away this game, to be completely honest. Okay. He's being really aggressive here. I don't know if we'll have enough elixir to defend. Yeah, not quite. So I'm going to pressure on the opposite lane, and then if we cycle back to another log, we're going to be able to defend. Or if those wall breakers connect, we're going to win the game. I don't think he's back to Barbaro yet. He has to defensively fireball this, otherwise it takes his whole tower. He does. We're going to go for a Dark Goblin and then a Log, and that's going to close out this game. Our spam is better than, than their spam. Let's go. And we'll see y'all in the next one. And our final match here. I'm going to actually go like this. Defend with the Wall Breakers, and it forces out the Log. So you know what that means. We're going to go like this. They probably have a NATO in here. So if they do go for the NATO... Beautiful, beautiful. I actually don't think they have a NATO anymore. I changed my mind. Knight here like this. Super, super low. It's also going to defend the bandit, which is going to be awesome for us. Looks like it's either P.E.K.K.A. or some form of bridge spam. So he goes for the magic archer, gets three shots, four shots. That's actually a lot of damage, so well played. A lot of times, good P.E.K.K.A. players, they need to rely on secondary ways to get their damage, like going for those magic archers. Um, at the bridge. So that is well played. Not upset about that. He forces out the log. So what do we do? Defensive wall breakers here. And I don't think he'll have enough elixir to defend that properly. Yep, that's going to connect. Because he played that bandit at the bridge, which was a little aggressive, wasn't able to defend. So their deck is also a very aggressive deck. They have a lot of spam units. But I think in this certain situation, it's a really good matchup for us because they usually rely on um, forcing out all of your ground cards and then playing a spam unit and you don't have anything in hand. But because we have so many spam units, I think we have an advantage for an advantage. He might go for Magic Archer on this. He doesn't. Okay. Rascal Boy up high. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay. Mm, yeah, I'm going to go like this because I think he's going to pop the ability. And then Evil Knight is a really good option against the Evo. Um, queen. Okay. Gonna go for a, a goblin barrel there. And Evo Knight is gonna be annoying for him. Probably force out like a ghost or something. Or he's just gonna soak some of the damage. He does. A lot of the damage though. That's actually gonna do a lot. Not as much as the other side though. So well played. What is he gonna drop in front of this? Maybe a battle ram? Yeah. That's a common-ish play by bridge fan players. Fortunately, we're going to take care of that. No problem with the well-placed rascals. 
That ghost wasn't that good because I am able to protect um, my princess. I'm gonna goblin barrel in the back so that way he can't log the princess and the barrel. Beautiful. He missed one of the goblins and that's gonna get a ton of damage. If I had a big spell right now, I would totally rocket that uh, marcher, but unfortunately I do not. And you can see really, really good split, split lane pressure here. That's the name of the game if you're going to be running this deck. Okay. And you can see once again, barrel down. He has to log. He doesn't have the log for that side though. And I don't know about that, that marcher. That felt like it was kind of aggressive, but maybe he knows more than me. Okay. Okay. Do or die here for both of us. And we're going to go for defensive wall breakers. Just to keep those Evo barbs off, off of our tower. And you can see the spam is heating up. Spam v spam. Super, super interesting matchup. Both of us, like, we trade paint back and forth. And uh, they're playing really well. This is a very talented player. I think they're going to go for a Magic Archer lineup here, possibly. Not entirely sure. I'm going to go like this, just in case. They don't. No worries, no worries, no worries. We're still going to be able to pressure effectively. Doesn't miss the log this time. Pressuring in both lanes. Okay. Dark Goblin going to get a ton of value here. As well as our Knight is going to get a ton of value. Okay. Going to go for... Really, really good read by my opponent, actually. He goes for that log, but now he doesn't have a log for the barrel. He has to play something on the barrel as well as the wall breakers. One of those, I think, connects. Oh, almost. Not quite, not quite. I don't think he has a big spell, though. So if we do defend properly... We will win this game. Okay, I was ready for the Magic Archer. Did you see that Evil Knight? <laughs> that Evil Knight was like the hardest Magic Archer read. He needs to play the log. I don't know. I don't know. He's going to log on that side. No bandit, but Wallbreaker connects. Knight to protect my princess here. He's been going for pre-logs, so I'm going to go like... Yeah, I was going to say I'm going to try and wait here. Doesn't have log in hand to defend either side. And that Magic Archer is the only thing that I'm worried about right now, to be completely honest. So I'm going to log, get it off the board. Goes for the pre-log, and that's why we placed our Dark Goblin on that side. Doesn't have log in hand, so he's going to probably spam. We're going to Wall Breakers as well. And then we're going to go for a log. And as long as we don't get a Magic Archer lineup, I'm going to Goblin Gang like this. We're going to go ahead and take this game. Well played to my opponent. Spam versus spam. Kind of mistakes both ways, but we ended up getting the upper hand, so... That's a good match, and we'll see y'all in the outro. That's going to do it for today's video. Here's the deck one more time if you want to take a screenshot. Please give it a try. It's so fun. I promise you'll get lots of wins, and I'm looking forward to next season with you guys. I'll see you there.